Hello guys, so today I'm going to do something just a little different. I felt that I would wanted to respond to this, but I wasn't really sure if I should do a video, if I should respond a different way. So here we go. I'm just going to respond this way because it's kind of long and I I thought that maybe it'd be better if I did it this way. So this is in response to Blonde in the Belly of the Beast, her video, Don't Be Evil, Oh Really Google? <laughs> so I have to say first that I enjoy the videos Blonde puts together. I believed the comment that I would leave would be pretty long, so decided to make a video response instead. So let's get into it. I have to agree with what she said that we could see this coming. Not only is it in the TOS, but, you know, it's been part of our lives for a long time, okay? So when the slogan from Google, don't be evil, came out, I looked at my now husband and said, yeah, right, <laughs> right, yeah, right. I know where you're going. I know what you're doing. So you can see this coming from a mile away. The terms of service used in all their products allow the gathering of said information for the use of that information as they see fit. It basically says that. It uses jargon, but basically that's what it says. And I agree with what you said. We all checked yes for free stuff. But this is something that's rampant everywhere and even existed before the internet. Namely, our government. Um, Operation Shamrock is a great example. So after World War II, the U.S. saw its first national surveillance program called Operation Shamrock. It was designed to catch Soviet spies and was run by the NSA after it was established in 1952. So the way they did this was every day, usually at about midnight, the nation's telegraph traffic was collected from corporate offices in New York in the form of punch cards and then taken over to the NSA office. They copied them and then returned them. So just pause there for a second. That is the telegraph office and that company participating, cooperating with the government to spy on its people. So just think about that. And they've always done that. I mean, even before this, there was the Pinkertons in the West. So this is not something that's new. This is something that's very old. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just not, I don't look at a government situation or, or a business and go, you're not going to collect anything on me. You're totally harmless. I don't do that. It's just historically it's wrong. So I also have a personal example of this sort of thing happening where it's kind of personal, but I'm just gonna like really personal, but I'm just gonna go into it anyway, where uh, my first visit to the gynecologist, right? And I'm sitting there waiting it's my turn and I'm reading the fine print of what I'm signing. And in the fine print, like the second paragraph says that not only will they, will they take whatever tissue necessary for whatever situation you've got going on, but then they will also take extra and store it and save it for experimental purposes. Now, I couldn't believe what I was reading. I was like, you're just gonna take random stuff off of me and store it and, and use it for whatever, whatever you want. So I asked her to make sure that I was reading this correctly. And she said, yes, they take it and they use it to experiment on for the advancement of science. So I said, well, I don't want you to do that. So she said, well, that's what we do. And I said, okay, goodbye. <laughs> All right. Uh, this, this, is, this is something, collecting people, All right, whether it be our ideas, our physical nature, like our tissue or our DNA or whatever, is something businesses and governments do. And it didn't always used to be that way. It used to just be like the general idea of you collect like, for example, I used to work for a fast food chain. And in this fast food chain, the thing they want you to do to have good customer service is remember, oh yeah, this guy gets two shakes and a fry whenever he comes in. That's all he ever orders. That's all he wants. So that is a small form collection. I don't think that's bad, right? That's fine. But when it gets into like, we're going to take tissue, we don't need to take, we don't need to do all that, then that's, that's not okay. So it starts small, but it ends up this way. And with the government, 
it never even really starts small. It always starts like medium to big and then blows up into this NSA thing. Okay. So this is this is just so this is why for me your conclusion that we need to put Facebook and Google and all this well Google you're talking about Google mostly um, to put it under government control is just not the right answer I don't think making a utility is going to solve anything that business will still be there even when they split up for example they split up Ma Bell right I don't know if anybody who's listening to this is old enough to remember this but Bell the Bell system called it they call it Ma Bell it's Bell South now Bell Northern Bell or something like that and they split it up into four companies but for those four companies were still owned collectively by this one guy like he just couldn't have one company so they made him do four companies but still owned by the one guy it's like stupid but that's that's all that does these people who are running these companies will still run these companies and it will still be bad so so that's why I think it's flawed um, it's just handing this over to people who think the same way like if you even say well now it has to be government controlled where it's uh, the government tells them how to run their business well that's wrong we can't be doing that you know so I mean as we've seen throughout history governments don't make things better they don't you know people do so you know I would just respectfully suggest that the that people are the answer to this problem not government not you know not other businesses coming to take it over but other businesses offering the thing people want right what is the product our the product that we buy into is being able to voice our opinions our our views our for me it's my religion that's what this channel is mostly about is religion and politics so you know being able to show people how we do things differently being able to teach people that's the product that they have and the way that uh, we are going to make it so that knowledge is always free and available to everyone is to show companies businesses whatever that when you restrict knowledge which is basically what they're doing they're saying we don't want certain knowledge available in our library database. I, I look at it as the phone book. In the Google phone book, they don't want to list certain companies, right? And you and I and whoever else on YouTube would be like a business, okay? So they don't want to list those. So just like with phone books, there were two or three different kinds of phone books that had different businesses in them. So what we have to do is diversify the the knowledge and say okay you can find the knowledge here 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 and here you have an opinion you need to write for your local newspaper you have an opinion you need to write a blog and put it somewhere you have an opinion you need to write for a national newspaper or something uh, you know uh, you and two or three other people should get together and write together like um, Louder with Crowder is part of a group, and then you have the Ben Shapiro was also part of a group of people, and they all got together and made this one business where that where they get together and put out certain views, and so that's what should what should happen. So I just respectfully suggest that people are the answer to this problem. Move away from using the products that Google has provided for us which is basically just a spot for us to it's basically just a soapbox for us to stand on or it's basically just a virtual book for us to write or what have you and what happens to the phone book will happen to them as well we the people have the power to change everything that's going on we the people are the ones who decide how things are run not the government for me as a conservative, to run to the government to fix this problem is the wrong answer, and it always will be. So for me, the answer is always we the people. What are we the people willing to do? What are we willing to, to 
sacrifice in order to have freedom? Is it, it comes down to the age old question, do you value freedom or do you value, you know, being taken care of? And for me, it's freedom. You want to be free and dangerous or safe and a slave. And I would rather be free and dangerous <laughs> than safe and a slave. So that's just my viewpoint. I wanted to answer you because I thought that would get kind of long. And it did get kind of long because I have a tendency to ramble. So anyway, thanks to whoever's watching this. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.